Hello and welcome to our ninth Haskell tutorial. So a little bit of a change of plan and we're actually going to go over functions, uh, adding them to our interpreter today because uh, it can be a little bit tricky. So I'm going to try and change this interpreter as little as possible to add functions. So how I think I'm going to do it is I'm going to add in uh, a lambda. A lambda and the lambda is going to have uh, how's this going to work so a lambda is going to have an expression inside it and it's going to have the list of things that it binds to um, so I could something like for example uh, lamb so if I, uh, mm, yeah so x y to x plus y that in our syntax would be lamb of x oops x y and then it would be inside there it would be sort of plus I'll put it in brackets uh, for x for y so that's that's what that's how we're going to express them uh, so here I have the Haskell syntax and here I have our abstract syntax um, so yeah that makes sense we also need a new type of value though because because the way I see this working is we we say things like, oh, um, we might have expressions that are a bit like let x equal uh, lambda, you know, x, y to x plus y, you know, something like that in x of 10, uh, 12. You know, that that's that's the kind of that's the kind of use case for this. So I'm trying to avoid uh, adding definitions because. Uh, we're going to look at definitions soon when we go into recursive functions. Um, but for now, <coughs> sorry, um, we're not going to do that yet. Uh, so I'm trying to keep it simple and I'm not going to add in some way of uh, defining a function other than in a let expression uh, as a value. So we've added our lambda and we need some kind of function value. So the value I think I'll go for is a closure. And a closure looks very much like our lambda, um, but it has one additional thing. It has the environment. Um, and, oh, that's not how you spell closure. Um, and I could, I could really simplify. I could do this in a much, a much sort of simpler way, a more elegant way, where I could have sort of a function value, and I could borrow from Haskell functions, um, and I could, I could define it something like this, you know, value to value. Um, but I'm not going to do that. I'm not. And the reason why is because this method of doing things is actually mathematically flawed. Um, you know, you have to ask the question: Is a function a value? Etc. 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 And you can answer yes to that question, but sometimes you have to deal with the Russell paradox if you're familiar. So um, that's a problem in set theory, which is of course linked to the questions like what is a value. Um, and Russell pointed out that it's kind of uh, it's impossible to define a set, uh, a certain set in set theory, and that is uh, the set of all sets that don't contain themselves. Um, and, you know, you can kind of see why that's an impossible set to define because it causes a paradox. Um, so say S is the set of all sets that don't contain themselves. Is S in itself? Is S in S? Um, and if you go, yes, S is in S, then you've contradicted yourself because S is the set of all sets that don't contain themselves. So if you say, okay, no, fair enough, S isn't in S, then it should be because it is a set that doesn't contain itself. And you end up with the same problem if you add function values. So it makes more sense. Um, well, does it make more sense? I don't know. But you can completely avoid thinking about that part of philosophy if you just uh, go for 
this way of doing it. Um, and we capture the environment. Great. So we now need a way of, so, so the eval function modification is easy enough. Eval of lamb list of ident, oh, no, what am I doing? Uh, IDs and e env equals uh, closure, I have said closures here by accident. Closure IDs e env, there we go. Easy line, easy line. The problem is when we add apply. So this is when things get a little bit of tricky. Uh, tricky. So apply, um, and then that's going to be a value. Oh, value. Uh, oh, should it be a value? Um, maybe, maybe not. Uh, no. Oh no, no, it should be expression. Maybe we'll evaluate it to a value and expression. So apply is essentially, um, say I had a function in Haskell to evaluate the nth term of the Fibonacci sequence, Fib10, that is like apply. Um, so in our abstract syntax, that would be apply. And then you'd have the lamb get some brackets in there um, and it's going to be say our function is x uh, and n if we find the nth term and then some expression to find the nth term of the Fibonacci sequence and then we'd just give it a lonely number 10 that's that would be the equivalent um, so apply actually does the evaluation of a function. So we will need to also define that. So if I'll apply, uh, what's it take in? It takes in our function and it takes in our arguments. So the first thing that we're going to need to do, um, is evaluate the function and we're going to want to, yeah, we, we, yeah, this isn't too bad actually. Um, but I'm going to make another function apply just to make life a little bit neater because we're going to be, um, the reason is if you want to add in like primitive functions, um, like I could, I could take away minus, I could take away plus, and I could add in lots of extras. I'd make primitive functions. Uh, you kind of want, you'll want it to do something different then. Uh, because for example, I could have primitive functions expressed with the other type of value as a function, as a Haskell function, and then I get a speed up um, instead of having them all as closures that you have to evaluate. Anyway, enough of that. Apply, it's going to be of type value to value to value. So this is going to take in all of the, um, this is going to take in all of the pre-evaluated uh, things. So apply of, and then what, mat closure, um, There you go. Um, oh, and I need the values. And then all it's going to do um, is it's going to eval E. Um, yes, and it needs to be in an environment that has been elaborated. Um, with those values. So in here, I want to, well, think about it. So I need to, I need to add to the environment. I need to pair up 
vowels and IDs. So I could probably do that in a really nice way, actually. How, how is my... Hey, look, so I could go uh, zip, couldn't I? I could zip um, IDs with vowels. Um, so zip, I don't know if we've been over this, it's gonna take two lists and it's going to pair them up uh, into a list of tuples, which just happens to be how I defined my environment, uh, which is quite nice. And then of course, I'm gonna need to add the environment to the end. So that should work. I don't know. I haven't planned this lesson at all. Um, Cabal REPL. Oh, pass error. That's an interesting one. I've missed, have I? Oh, I completely forgot to define the body of uh, the evaluation function. Um, so what's this gonna be? So I'm gonna want to apply I'm going to call my function apply f prime and x is prime uh, where f prime equals eval f uh, in the environment and x is prime uh, is going to equal um yes if i'll i'm going to want to map over it if i'll env x uh, x's so i think that'll do it so here we get the function value the closure hopefully and here we get the uh, the evaluated inputs to our function. So what I should probably do as a good programmer is I should say apply of anything else um, equals an error. Um, so I could say using a value as if it's a function. Okay, let's have a look. Oh, um, different numbers of arguments. What have I done? Have I, oh, yep. <laughs> I need to, yeah. and now what have I done? So couldn't match expression with environment. So expected a list of environments and instead got a list of expression. Interesting. Oh, look at that. My expression comes first. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say flip. So what that does is um, at the moment eval, the first argument is an expression and the second is an environment. I now flip it so that the first argument is the environment, which I've provided, and the second argument is the expression. I could use a lambda to do the same thing. And there we go. So let's test it out. Uh, this is gonna be quite difficult. Writing an abstract syntax is a little bit disgusting. Um, but let's make our expression. So it's gonna be let. So let first of all takes an ident, so the classic. I'll say add. I'm going to sort of redefine add if you like. Um, so let add, and then the second part of let is um, an expression. So here it's going to be lam. Add is going to be a lambda. And it's going to take in uh, two things, x and y. And its body is going to be add. I'm just going to use the built-in add. I think it was called add. Um, I'm going to say add, and then it's going to be var x and var y. So, yep, yeah, var x and var y. And then I need an in 
Um, I think that comes at the very end. In... So what am I going to say? Oh, I'll just say uh, apply. I'll put this in brackets. Apply, and then R is going to be var add. And then it's going to be, um, n was it number? I think it was number. Number one number two um, construction on the scope expression 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 um, let me let me just quickly check what my abstract syntax is I lost oh plus it's plus um, not add so plus and I think the rest of that's okay um, I made the last video quite a long time ago. No, what have I done now? The function apply is applied to three arguments. Oh dear, I forgot some brackets, haven't I? Uh, square brackets. It's, um, I can remove these brackets. It takes a list of expressions, not a set of expressions. There we go. Oh, hey, so, um, eval e in the empty environment oh oh you're joking okay so i've i found the problem it was actually a spelling mistake you see here i've uh, l i've changed it to a lowercase ad but uh, here i had an uppercase ad and a lowercase ad. My bad. It works fine, absolutely fine. Um, but there's more to do. Um, what if I want recursive functions? Recursive functions are slightly tricky. I think we're going to go for a sort of an OCaml way about this. So in OCaml, a function definition could be like let f x y equal x plus y. Um, but if I wanted to do some kind of recursive function, I'd have to say let rec f. And it changes how it does the environment. Um, and we're going to really use laziness to get this right. Um, makes life a lot easier. Um, so we kind of need different types of definitions. So I'm going to add a new type, data defin. And it's either going to be um, a value, um, and that's going to be an identity with an expression. Oh, yep, ident, cool. Uh, or it's going to be a rec value, recursive value, which is also just going to be ident or expression. Um, and the way we treat these is going to be a little bit different uh, in. So I mean, we're going to. Of course, we don't use them at all yet. So we're going to need to work out where to put them. So, first thing is what I think I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to change a lab. So at the moment, a lab takes an environment. It takes an identifier and it takes an expression. Um, and we evaluate that expression. But what I think we're going to do is we're going to change it so it takes a definition. So what we're going to do is we're going to do some pattern matching here. So if so, it's definition now. So if it's val i e, pretty much nothing's going to change. But lab env rec i e, things get a little bit interesting. Um, so first of all, the expression has to be a lambda, doesn't it? Um, we can't have recursive values. So I'm going to pattern match further. And I'm going to say lam, um, I'll just have that as args and expression. 
here. Um, and I'll add a nice useful error message. Hey lab, don't care, don't care. Uh, I think that's it. And then error um, only lambdas can be recursive. Cool. Onwards. So a lab is weirdly about to get recursive. Um, so the general idea um, is that we are going to... Ooh, how are we going to do this? Okay, so we're going to say it equals nv prime. Um, where nv prime equals um, and then we're going to say so that's got to be of type environment so it's going to be um, probably a recursive call to that yes so we'll put in front of env uh, another call to abstract. Hmm. So we're going to add I. And then abstract, so closure. I think, yes, that makes sense. Yes, args e, and then what else comes? N of prime, yeah, yeah. So I realize that this makes very little sense. Um, <laughs> uh, essentially here, I mean, I can make this make a bit more sense. Uh, so we evaluate uh, we're going to evaluate essentially this in this environment. So we have a recursive environment, but uh, I skip some steps uh, because there's a lot more boilerplate doing it that way. I know the definition of eval lime, uh, lamb eval is this, which you see here. So that's why you see this side lamb and this side closure. That's because I'm simplifying some steps. Um, now we need a recursive environment because um, we need access to it when we call i. We need access to i in the environment. Um, and we're always going to need access to that. And you see, because we have the environment here, if I just put env there, um, env comes from here. It doesn't have access to i. So it's kind of a bizarrely <laughs> recursive environment. Um, yeah, but now what we're going to do is we're going to go and I think, where do we call a lab? I think we only call a lab here. So we need to change how we do let. So let takes in a definition now and maybe that's it. Maybe that's all we need to change. Nothing else. Ah, of course, we're going to need to change the type up here. So defn. OK. No, so I've made a mistake here put indent instead of ident. That's a harmless mistake. Ah, 
some deriving cases are missing, so it won't be able to automatically derive oh, everything. So line 18, um, deriving show. Now, aha, a proper proper coding error. Um, couldn't match expected type expression to end with, oh, it thinks it's missing an expression because that's the type of env. So let me have a look back at my definition of elap. Um, okay, it takes in two. Oh, did it used to take in, ah, it no longer takes in an expression because the expression is inside the definition now. Okay, cool. So if we go back here, I will need to make a few changes um, to this part at least, because now it's not, uh, it's just a foul and that should work exactly the same. Oh, <laughs> apparently not. Uh, ah, look at that. The definition contains the expression now. So we don't use E, do we use it at all anymore? No, we don't use E1 anymore. So let's go and make those changes. Okay, and then that's gonna start playing ball with us. Yes, okay, and now we can go up to our big one. Oh, so I need to put that bracket back. Yeah, there we go. Okay, now let's try and find, think of a recursive function. Um, and this is gonna be absolutely horrible because we're working with abstract syntax. So rec this time. So uh, we're gonna need an if statement. So let me quickly remind myself what the syntax is for them. Uh, do we have them? Oh, we don't have if statements. Oh dear, let's add them. Let's quickly add an if statement. Um, so if uh, expression, expression, expression. So this is if then else. Um, so that's your guard, that's your expression, that's your expression. And we will also add in, you see, as soon as we add in recursive expressions, um, we have to add in all sorts of extra things. Um, so bool foul. Bool. Now let's um, add it here. So eval if guard e2 e1 env equals. Um, I think it's just match. Uh, match. Val G env with and then oh no is it ah it's case of I'm still thinking of O camel case of and then we could say true uh, goes to eval E1 and sorry for being so rushed about this. False. Uh, eval E2 env. So here what I've done. Um, yeah, here what I've done is I've uh, I've basically gone well. Oh, I have made a mistake as well. That needs to be pool val true bool val false. So I've said we're going to evaluate G. Uh, if it turns out to be true, great. If it turns out to be false, uh, we do E2 instead. 
Um, I'm also going to need some kind of comparison. So I'm going to add in our oh, language is getting longer and longer. So I'm going to add in equals expression expression. So this is going to return. This is going to be an equality check. Um, oh, I also need to add in bool value. Oh, val uh, boolean b env equals bool val b. Um, so I'm going to completely cheat when it comes to equality. Um, you see, for my value, I say deriving show. If I also derive equality, um, I can then compare, see if they're equal to one another. So, um, where shall I add that? Eval equals E1, E2, env. Oh no, my alignment. Okay, let me just do this much quicker. Um, yep. So that's going to equal uh, bool val of eval e1 env equals eval e2 env. So I've added to the language uh, if conditions, equality checks, um, and booleans. So I've added all that code. There's no way it's going to compile straight away. Uh, OK, I need to add equality to um, expression as well. So EQ, when it derives that, when Haskell derives that, it does that recursively, just like show. So because I have an expression hiding here, I have to add it here, but I'm also going to have to add it to the definitions because let contains definition. So it won't be able to resolve equality for expressions without definitions. Oh, hey, look at that. Minimal mistakes. Um, so let's try and make... Oh, this can be horrible. Okay, so let's wreck. So let's maybe do factorial. Factorial. Now it's going to have an expression. So if uh, well, for, actually, hold on. First of all, first of all, it needs. Um, to be a lambda, its input is just going to be n, um, but its expression is going to be if, and then it's going to be equals, and then it's going to be far n, and if that is equal to number zero, then, so I need to be here, I think. Yep. So if it's true, then we're going to return uh, number one. If not, oh, look, we can't do factorial because I haven't added in multiplication. Uh, so let's just make sum. So we'll make something that sums up to. So if you give it some 10, it'll do 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8 plus 9 plus 10. Um, so number 0. Um, if it's false, however, then we'll do add of far n and 
Um, oh my god, this is so long. <laughs> Apply. Um, Apply takes in an expression which will just be var sum of, oh, it's not add, it's plus, um, and then it's going to be minus. So what we're doing here is we'll have an expression minus num bar one. Oh, I have to do it the other way. Oh no. Oh no, I've lost. Oh, this is awful. What did it not new line? Oh, now it new lines. Oh, absolutely no idea what happened to my brackets. Sorry about that terminal mess up. Um, anyway, so uh, minus, and then it's going to be far n minus from number one. So you can see the recursive call there. Um, so we're minusing one. I think that's it. I just need to work out how many brackets I need to add back in. Um, so let me count the brackets so far. One, two, three. Oh no, one, two, three, four. Oh, hold on. I realize that uh, that needs to be a list. So one, two, one, two. So that needs to be there. I can remove a set of brackets, but then apply has a bracket around it. Um, plus has a bracket around it. If has a bracket, I think it's like that. No, it's had more brackets and see. Yeah, there we go. So, um, yes. So the type of that is going to be expression to expression because we've not given letter body yet. We've not given it an in. So I'm going to say stupid variable names equals E and then I'm going to give it what we're doing. So what we're going to say is we're going to say uh, apply far sum. So we'll sum the numbers uh, 1 plus 2 plus 3. Uh, nice and easy. Um, number three. Oh, and I forget again, it's square brackets for the arguments. So, <laughs> val x of this, six. There we go. We have successfully made a recursive function <laughs> that does something. So we can change that to 10 if you so wish. And there we go. Recursion. Uh, I don't know about you, I think that's quite cool. A um, bit annoying having to work with abstract syntax, um, but no matter. Um, we shall eventually move on to making a front end using Alex and Happy. Um, but for now, that should be all. Uh, see you next time, and we will actually add monads to our interpreter. <laughs>